Ensure this engine is the same application as the one being replaced. Warranty void. When it comes to installing the transmission and your engine into the actual vehicle or the chassis jig that you're working on, you're going to need to know a lot of things. And most people don't really understand how in-depth this really is. Now, we're not talking about doing the bolt-on thing where somebody made a kit and you just throw it in there. No, that's the easy stuff. We're talking about placing it from fore and aft for a better weight distribution. We're talking about making sure that it has the right height to it so your roll center isn't affected. We're talking about things like future serviceability. Like if you made a stupid mistake, like put it where a tube is going to be and now you can't even get the alternator out of it, stuff like that. There are actually six angles that you need to have in place just right in order for your entire project to work out. The first three angles are your standard X, Y, and Z when referenced on a flat plane with no angle. X is your fore and aft placement, or placement closer in relation to the front or the rear of the vehicle. Y is your left or right placement, or placement closer to the passenger or the driver's side. Now Z is your height, whether it is closer to the ground or closer to the hood. Then we get into the Euler angles, or the U, V, and W. These are most commonly known as your yaw, pitch, and roll. The U angle is the roll angle on the X axis. This is basically which side of the cylinder heads will lean toward. They'll either move left or they'll move more right. The V angle is our pitch on the Y axis, or which way the harmonic balancer will point, either to the floor or to the roof. The W angle is our yaw on the Z axis, or which way the harmonic balancer will point, either left or right. Since I really can't go about hiding this for the rest of this video, since we gotta talk about where it's at, you gotta see it and all the rest of that good stuff, here it is. This is my 3.5 liter EcoBoost, first generation, pulled from a 2015 Ford Expedition. I got this thing for less than the price of eBay, thanks to a good friend of mine over at Panda Auto who hooked it up. I got it with the coils, harnesses, everything but the turbo manifolds and turbos because I'm going to custom build those. My transmission is the MT82 six speed. This, I believe, was pulled out of a 2000 2012, but this is the whole reason I decided to go with the entire EcoBoost setup here, just because I got this at a great deal. Now I found it listed on eBay for 500 bucks, fresh listing, and I just said, screw it, let's grab it. Thinking that they would welch, it finally showed up, so I said, well, I guess that's what I'm gonna run. This was a little bit of a slight problem that I had. The back of the transmission where the bolt goes in there, it was kind of messed up, maybe from shipping or maybe even from a, I don't know, somebody careless with a, with a transmission jack or something like that when removing it. That's the only problem I had. I had have a separate video all about fixing this if you want to check it out. It's really only coincidental that I have a Ford 8.8 sitting in the back of this thing, but this entire Mitsubishi Mighty Max is full Ford powered now. Now the EcoBoost makes some pretty good power and it's yet to be determined what their maximum actually is, but regardless of which, in a truck this size, it's going to scoot. To better help you understand how to set up your engine and your transmission and get it all aligned and the importance of all these angles, I'm going to show you some of the snags that I encountered and some things that you may have to look forward to because it's actually pretty complicated. The first measurement or placement that we need to figure out here is our X angle or our X placement. That is two-dimensionally forward or rearward on the vehicle. Where does that actually need to sit? Now they will say that for better weight distribution and things like road courses, time attack, best you know street trucks, whatever the case is, best handling, etc. for better weight distribution, you should have it more rearward. But if you're sometimes even in drag racing or even some vehicles themselves, they are a little bit more forward on this one. This particular truck that I'm building here is a street vehicle with a little bit of that, you know, maybe some sliding action, maybe some straight line action, maybe some whatever it is that I want to do. So I have it placed as rearward as possible, but future serviceability must be kept in mind on my build. I really don't want something stupid like I can't get to a sensor or a spark plug or anything else like that because it's buried under the wiper cowl. That just isn't going to do it for me. So my placement on this one, fore and aft, or my X angle, is as close to that firewall as I could possibly get it while still managing to service it. Our Y measurement is the left or right placement on the vehicle. Which side does it need to be oriented to? Now, I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen a whole lot of engines out there that actually have their placement to the left or to the right on either side of it. So it's dead nuts right down the middle. That's where it actually needs to be. And on my build, absolutely no different. The Z axis is the height of your engine. Now you definitely don't want it to go below your cross member or below your frame unless you have a ton of ground clearance. You don't necessarily want it to go and stick and way out the hood because that's actually going to affect your roll center. Higher center of gravity means that the body's gonna pitch and roll and all kinds of other stuff too with that. And that's a little bit more complicated and it's not universal. So we're just gonna kind of omit that until, well, until I get to that in my build. However, this 
usually is associated with the height of the engine. Now, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes they're gonna fit in there, other times it won't. Now, I did run into a slight problem that affected both my X and my Z axes in one shot and that was the location of my oil pan sump. The oil pan on this particular engine or this model in this orientation is a rear sump system. The sump is where all of the oil is stored and it's located at the back of the engine. That's what makes it a rear sump system. Now, some engines are available in different chassis from the manufacturer. This, the 3.5 liter, is available in longitudinal fashion, which means that it would be a rear sump system. And that's in the F-150 and the Ex Expedition and the, the Lincoln counterparts and et cetera, et cetera. But on the Ford Explorer and on the Ford SHO and a couple of other ones, they had a front sump system, which means that normally when they're transversely mounted or mounted from left to right or laterally, the exhaust pipe will typically go through where that rear sump is. So they put the sump on the front of it. That's the solution for this build. Now, most people would look at this and they say, oh, wow, it doesn't fit. Let's start hacking it up. Let's go for dry sump. Let's do whatever it is. But consider there might be an alternative out there. And if there is, go ahead and order it. My subframe and steering rack is currently out of the vehicle and I'm waiting on that pan to show up. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, it's not here, but as soon as it arrives, it's gonna be on there. Without that front sump oil pan here and on the engine itself, my Z measurement is subject to change. It may go up, it may go down, depending on the depth of that pan and how it sits. I don't really know that yet. But right now I can get it in here because two of the other angles that we need to figure out will not be affected, but one of them will be, and we have a solution for that. Now the U angle is the roll angle. That is if the cylinder heads are pointing to the left or to the right, or if they're one bank toward the other. Some engines will do this, other engines will not. You should know which one you have. My engine is right up the middle, perfectly level. The W angle is the yaw angle. Does the engine point more this way or does the engine point more that way? This is usually pointed straight. So to bring you up to speed here, just in case you skipped over some things or maybe I spoke too fast or maybe you just didn't catch it, the Y measurement is irrelevant. Usually it's right down the middle. The U angle and the W angle, those are both at zero degrees nine times out of 10. Unless you have an engine that specifically requires you to angle it or offset it or change anything about it, then you should know. But for the majority of it, it's always going to be right down the middle. And my build is absolutely no different than that one. The one measurement that everybody gets messed up on is the V measurement or the pitch angle. That's the relationship of the crankshaft or the harmonic balancer to the tail shaft or the output of the transmission. What angle does that need to sit at? It doesn't matter unless your powertrain meets certain criteria. Now, most engines are mounted at an angle with the tail shaft of the transmission angle down toward the floor. In modern vehicles, this is typically done to maximize passenger space. But in older vehicles, it was to level the carburetor at ride height. That's why if you look up the proper engine pitch angle, you'll see a lot of people saying three degrees is correct since it was the most common. However, if you have a carbureted engine, the correct measurement is zero degrees measured at the base of the carburetor or where it mounts to the intake manifold. Since we are running a modern engine with fuel injection, the V or pitch angle can be whatever we want it to be. I know I want my engine and transmission to be tucked up into the chassis and not sit below it. This helps avoid collisions with junk in the road. And since my oil pan is not here at the moment, I have to consider adjustment in the future when I do get the pan. And that brings us right into the mounting solution. Since my X measurement is set, my Y measurement is center, and my V angle is at zero degrees, I cut up the same three by two by 120 wall tubing for the chassis jig and centered it longitudinally at the front of the engine for the front mount and the cab section for the transmission mount. You may find that with some engines, obtaining a center reference is difficult. I measured the difference of the two bolts of the timing cover of the crankshaft and found that they were centered. These are the two bolts that I used to mount the front to. Since my Z measurement and V angle is subject to change once my oil pan arrives, I need to make sure that we can adjust the whole assembly once the new pan is installed. The simplest solution I know of is to slot the transmission mount. Now, after some careful measurements and a quick trip to the fast cut, we have mounting brackets that hold everything in place. Done and done. So the first thing that you need in order to start a chassis build from scratch is your good solid chassis jig and some axles, the axles that you're gonna use. The second thing is the body, it needs to be cut up and put in place. The third thing is the powertrain, all of that needs to be in place. And at this point, all we gotta do now is fill in the blanks, which will be coming up on the next episode because my mandrel bender just arrived. Thanks for watching.